member benefit of Composites UK. Right up there, next slide please. So before we get started, your microphones and cameras are turned off by default. There is no Q&A time after the presentations. Any questions should be asked in the virtual tables in the social lounge. We've got two sessions uh, today uh, with a 10 minute break in between. When session one ends, you'll be moved into the social lounge and then automatically brought back here when session two starts. And any networking will take place after all the presentations have been delivered. Next slide, please. So I want to take you very quickly through Composites UK and the uh, benefits of your membership. So this is your operations team. We're headed up by our CEO, Dr. David Bailey, who over oversees the strategy of the association. Dr. Sue Halliwell looks after the day-to-day -day running of the association. Claire Weisel is your point of contact for marketing and communications. Diane Alexander is your point of contact for events. I'm your point of contact for membership and the hub database. Malcolm Forsyth is your point of contact for sustainability. And Sarah Hunter is who you need to speak to regarding anything to do with finance. Next slide, please. So we're go governed by um, a board of directors. All of the board members are members of Composites UK and any member can put themselves forward to be a uh, member of the board. Next slide, please. The golden rules of membership, you get out of it what you put in. So we need to hear from you to make sure that what we're doing is what you expect of your trade association and to let us know if there's anything else we should be doing. So please talk to us, um, attend our events, use the services that we have available. Next slide, please. So since lockdown, we've been running around three to four webinars a month, uh, covering a wide range of different topics. And one that I would like to point you uh, towards is our next member meet on the 17th of March with a spotlight on Signet Texkimp, who's a fellow Composites UK member. Any member can uh, put themselves forward for a speaking opportunity. So please speak to Claire and Diane about that. Next slide, please. When we're allowed to, we run around 12 to 18 events a year, um, again, across a wide range of different topics. And two that I would like to point you towards are the International Composite Summit in September and the annual awards dinner on the, in November. Um, full details of all webinars and events is on the website and members receive discounted rates for attending, exhibiting and sponsoring. Next slide, please. We also work with other organisers to secure uh, discounts for our members, um, including the Advanced Engineering Show, where you can get 15% off your Stan Space and Shell scheme. And we work with the Department for International Trade on the UK Pavilion and uh, the TAP Grant Programme for JEC World. Next slide, please. We highly recommend you send any uh, press releases you have, any news items, anything at all, um, any events that you're working on. And um, if you send these through to Claire, we can then pop these on the website in our newsletters. And if you're active on LinkedIn and Twitter, please uh, tag Composites UK. And again, Claire can engage with those posts. Next slide, please. You can also advertise with us on the website, the hub, and in our newsletter. And we've also got secured preferential rates for um, Composites and Manufacturing Magazine and m and MT Magazine. Again, please speak to, speak to Claire about this. Next slide, please. So the hub database is free for any company within the Composite supply chain to have a page on. However, members receive priority listing and results, and you receive first refusal on any um inquiries we receive we also launched an annual report last year which members receive free of charge the next one's due um in june or july this year um if you want access to last year's one and need a login for the members area please let me know next slide please so the purpose of today's webinar is to take you through the business support network so we have our business support network partners with us today who are going to take you through their companies and the benefits that they offer to members um, aside from that we have a range of different activities and initiatives available um, if you're interested in any of this as well as any of the services we have from our partners who couldn't be here today 
uh, please come to the Composites UK table or contact me separately. Next slide, please. Um, I'm nearly finished, I promise. Um, so if to put it into um, context, if a company attends one regional event and three national events, places two press releases on our website and newsletter, So I'm going to take a breath now. Um, I'll be on the Composites UK table um, after this. Here's all our contact details and you know where we are when you need us. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to Jonathan Tandy from Towergate. Good morning. Thank you very much for the introduction, Charlotte. Um, I think I came on the call and said, uh, this blue sky and thought wow what what a day it's going to be but actually I've worked out what it is it's because my house is silent there is no homeschooling going on the children are not here so everything is <laughs> is all is well with the world um, but yes thank you I'm John Tandy I, I've worked at Towergate Insurance Brokers for almost 18 years uh, with general commercial insurance brokers but in terms of the numbers uh, in 2020 uh, we placed circa 800 million pounds worth of gross written premium for our clients. Uh, we look after approximately 250,000 clients across 50 nationwide offices and we employ 2,000 insurance professionals. But we are general commercial insurance brokers as I've said uh, and importantly and aligned to the association uh, we placed 81 million pounds worth of premium um, of manufacturing risks into the UK insurance market. This is in addition to circa 90 million for professional services, science and technology businesses. So motorsport and automotive, uh, that's what I'm all about. That's our office in Warwick where I'm based. It's been our core focus since our business started 25 years ago. And it's naturally what's brought us to Composites UK in recent years. <clears throat> so. The presentation, which is the shortest presentation slide deck I've ever produced because it's one slide. Uh, it, hopefully you can all see it now. But this is this is it. This is kind of insurance broking for last year, this year and definitely next year. And I wanted to just highlight some of these. So these eight topics are going to some or all of these will have an influence on every insurance renewal, commercial insurance renewal for all our members. Uh, in no particular order, things that were going to be covered off, discussed, queried, uh, business interruption, why wasn't it covered under the pandemic, uh, what was the recent test case that's come out of the Supreme Court really mean to Composites UK members. I will talk to everybody one-to-one -one on that, otherwise I'll be here for the next hour and you certainly don't want that. Um, management liability covers, so you may have uh, come across the term directors and officers insurance. Um, but also under management liability, which is a common uh, form of insurance you'd expect to see purchased by a limited company. Uh, the, the cover also includes what we call it employment practices liability. So with 10 million people uh, being furloughed in the UK, that's where the insurers feel there's going to be the next wave of employment related claims, wrongful dismissal, uh, HR fallout, etc, etc. But importantly, there's terms and conditions for these type of policies. And if all those changes within businesses, redundancies, planned redundancies are not communicated to your insurance company, uh, if you call upon it in the event of a claim, you may well find that it won't respond purely because of the requirements set upon you as a policyholder. Uh, flood insurance. So this is this is one that's starting to become a real headache now. Um, it's, it's insured less and less. Insurers have got much more um, technical underwriting criteria to enable them to, to calculate flood. Um, they've taken an absolute bashing in the UK insurance market over the last five, 10 years on flood. So we've worked with our partner firm to come up with lots of alternative solutions to, to flood insurance. In other words, insuring it in a different way with bespoke flood insurers. Um, and finally, yeah, just the, the 
the current insurance market conditions. So regardless of the pandemic, we're moving from what we call a soft market into a hard market. That means rates are going up, premiums are going up, there's cover restrictions. Never before do you need a proactive broker to enable you to manage yourself through uh, insur an insurance renewal. And uh, we're best placed to do that. We've got the resources, the market know-how and the experience of your sector to, to, to help you with that. And that's it. Thank you. Right on time there, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Um, so we're now going to move on to Hazel Napier from BB Contract and Legal Thanks. Um, yeah, morning everyone. Great to be here with you today. And so I just want to give you a quick overview of uh, BEB and what it is that we do. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> As Richard said, we're going full Chris Whitty this morning. Um, so quick introduction. Uh, we are contract law specialists. Um, it's quite a niche area of law. That's what we focus on day in, day out. It basically means that because it's so specialised, if you've come across a problem in the past, we've probably encountered it and solved it for a client before. Um, our company was formed in 2008 and we're based in Northampton, but we've got clients throughout the UK from Edinburgh to Torquay and further beyond. So uh, especially now everything's done electronically, uh, distance isn't an issue. Next slide, please. And um, so what we do is we specialise in contract drafting and reviews. So in terms of contract drafting, we can write all types of business contracts. So anything you might need in writing between you and your customers or suppliers. So. Typically, we get most um, asked to draft terms and conditions of sale, so they form the basis of the contract between you and your clients. Terms of purchase, which form the basis of the contract between you and your suppliers. We can also write uh, manufacturing and distribution agreements, subcontractor agreements. I don't know if anyone's come across IR35. It's essentially becoming more and more important that um, you determine whether your the people that work for you are employed or self-employed and a subcontractor agreement will help HMRC determine that as well. Um, shareholder agreements, which are absolutely critical for every limited company with more than one shareholder. Um, it's basically like a will for your business. It's various worst case scenarios that might happen and how you get around that. Um, and if you're not limited, we can do partnership agreements as well. And then we do GDPR, privacy policies and all sorts of other things. Uh, next slide, please. And then on to contract reviews. So if you ever get sent contracts from your customers or your suppliers, it might be that you've, um, in the past, you've had the land on your desk and you weren't really sure what to do with it, so you just signed it and sent it back. We always say, please don't do that. <laughs> um, we recommend you never sign a contract without reading it. And if you need help with that, it doesn't matter if it's a five-page or a hundred-page document, you can send it to us, we'll review it for you, we'll pick out any areas of risk and we'll tell you what those are so you can make a business decision as to whether you're willing to accept the risk or not. And if needs be, we can help you negotiate a fairer deal for yourself. Um, a lot of people are worried when they go into a contract with large organisations, but those are the businesses that are likely to have their own in-house legal team that are just waiting for you to come back with issues or questions on the contract that they've sent you. And most of the time, that legal team have a really easy ride because they're just sitting on their hands and no one ever um, wants to question anything, whereas we like to make their lives a bit more difficult and we'll help you get a fairer deal for yourself. Um, we do specialise in construction contracts. so. For those of you that work on construction sites, you've possibly come across a JCT contract, which is a specialist construction contract. Um, unfortunately, they are horrendous if you don't know what you're getting into. So we're talking about 120 day payment terms. You lose your ownership and your materials as soon as they're delivered to site and all sorts of awful other things. So um, we've recently launched, in fact, this week, uh, we've launched a suite of uh, training courses. So on our website, there's um, nine modules which will talk you through the, the basis of the JCT and what to look out for and what to avoid. And so we'd love to chat to you about that. Next slide, please. So how we work, um, every document we draft is completely bespoke to your business. So we'll, we always have two consultations. The first one to find out exactly what you do and how you do it so we can tailor the document to suit you. And the second one to explain what's in there, um, any legal terminology, and um, we'll make any changes to it until you're completely happy with it. Everything we write is in plain English, which is quite refreshing for some of our clients, I think. Um, but we always think if you don't understand what's in your contract, how are your customers supposed to? And it's far less likely to end in a dispute if you both know what you're getting into at the outset. And everything we do is under a fixed price package. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a contract drafting or review. It's always a fixed fee so you can budget for it. Next slide, please. So just to introduce the member offer, so we've got um, a 10% discount on our bronze, silver and gold packages. So we're super um, 
transparent about our pricing. It's all on our website. And it basically means you can get a set of T's and C's or a shareholder agreement or anything else you need for your business drafted for less than 360 quid. And um, you've got our contact info there. Just quote Composites 10 so we know you remember. And we'd love to chat with you at the uh, virtual table at the end. Thanks very much. Thank you, Hazel. That was another very well-timed presentation. Uh, we're going to move on now to Richard Smith from Talent Retention Solutions. Oh, hi, everyone. Very good morning. And Charlotte and Claire, thanks very much indeed for the opportunity to speak with members today. Um, right. OK, overview. What is TRS? Well, it's a single point of entry where people who've lost their jobs register for new opportunities. Employers can also register on this platform to post vacancies and can reach out to people of interest. As its roots in the aerospace and defence industry from the 2010 Strategic Defence and Security Review, and it's now recently been extended and funded by government into the construction and aviation sectors. It was launched last week by uh, Robert Courts, the Aviation um, Minister, or the Minister for Aviation for that, that particular sector. And again, it provides that focus through which um, uh, people who have lost their jobs for COVID-19 simply go on to this single this single site and employers are invited to go on as well particularly those that are looking to, to to recruit it's not for profit there are no recruitment agencies allowed to operate on the the, the platform and is free of charge uh next slide please uh, charlotte thank you so this is the home page this is a layout of what the system looks like and you can get in through the home page if you want to Next slide, please, Charlotte. And this is the construction page. So you can hit the URL there if you're an employer. So if you're looking to recruit, you can come onto this system. You can register. Uh, we'll pick you up. We'll enable your access. And you can go on. You can advertise your vacancies and recruit for charge. E equally, the system is there for people who are at risk. So if sadly, if you do have people or know of people who are at risk and who have lost their jobs, just please point them at the system, ask them to register. It's there for, for people too who have lost uh, their employment opportunities. Uh, next uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, and this is the one that went live last week for the aviation sector. And again, this is focusing on everyone across the aviation industry. Isn't it? But, uh, men and women who fly aircraft, it's about engineers, it's about people that drive vehicles up and down the runways to check that they're safe, it's retail, it's customer focused, it's cabin crew, it's the whole gambit of people who are involved in the aviation and sector. Again, we're asking employers to register on the system if they're looking to take people on and we're looking for people to register on the system that are looking for new jobs. And some of these jobs won't be in aviation, some will be in other sectors, but People are comfortable with that. It's better that people work than sit around um, in, in, a, in a situation of unemployment or at risk situations if they can find alternatives to work. That's what this is there for. Uh, next slide, please, uh, uh, Charlotte. Thank you. And that's the uh, bottom half of the registration page to the left. It's for employers, for candidates to register. There's some details of organisations there that are on the system and the news feed as well. Next slide, please, Charlotte. Um, the system itself isn't just a one-trick pony. It, it's been designed in such a way that the functionality of the system can be tailored to work within companies as well. And, and, and you'll see here a portal that is working at the moment for Rolls-Royce, who announced, um, it was last year or the year before, that 9,000 people were at risk of losing their jobs. So this platform here purely purely focuses on the people that are leaving Rolls-Royce at the moment, but they're still coming out uh, or at risk. And uh, if any of you uh, on, on, the, on the call today are looking for people, uh, you can go onto the Rolls-Royce platform and they free of charge. Um, next slide, please, uh, Charlotte. Ministry of Defence have also looked at this portal and have designed with us their own portal. And this, this covers all aspects of the MOD from military through to BNS and port and down. So it's a comprehensive platform for the MOD uh, to use to take people in. This, is, this includes veteran returners, men and women that used to work in the MOD that have gone out and perhaps are looking for a return role of some description. 
And um, final slide, I think, please, Charlotte. So at the end of the day, um, CRS and its various portals are, are not here just in response to economic shock, though this is what led to our creation in the first place. The functionality has been tailored to working sectors and companies, and in particular, Rolls-Royce are using as part of their own internal global restructuring program. It saved them in excess of 30 million quid um, in terms of retaining people and being able to move them more effectively and efficiently around the business. The MOD defense portal is the one that I've just mentioned. We work in nuclear industry as well and in early careers uh, where we support universities, we support students and, and apprentices too through a separate allied site um, called Talent View, which um, I'm very happy to go into a bit later. But other than that, that's it. It's, it's a quick just run through what we do uh, and just to mention that it is free of charge. There are no agencies allowed to operate on the system. Anyone can register on the system other than agencies. If you're an employer and you're looking to take people on, please just go on and, you know, register. We'll pick you up. We'll support you. And if you know of people who are losing their jobs, please just point them at the system and ask them to register. We'd be delighted to support them in any way we can. And I think that's about it, uh, Charlotte. Thanks so much indeed and to everyone for your time this morning. Thank you, Richard. Um, we're now going to move on to uh, Mika Bristow from Page. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for having me. Um, my name is Misha Bristow. I'm the Business Development Manager at Paycheck. Um, next slide, please. So Paycheck, uh, just to give you a bit of background, Paycheck are a fully managed outsourced payroll bureau. Um, we support a whole diverse of clients with their payroll. Um, we've been running since 1996, so uh, just 25 years. Um, we have around 1,500 clients on our books at the moment. Um, and most of, or 95% of it all comes from recommendations, so word of mouth. Um, we have 600,000 payslips per year. Our accuracy as it stands at the moment is 99.9%. Um, and our team, we're just a small team of 40, um, based in Battersea. Um, and the majority of the team actually and the staff, they all run payroll. I think there's only a small handful of us that don't. Um, next slide, please. Um, just to give you uh, an idea of the type of clients that we look for, you can see in the left hand side there that these are our bigger clients. So we work with the likes of Jimmy Choo and Babylon and help support them with their payroll. Um, but we do support a whole diverse and a whole different range of clients. So there's not one particular industry that we work with. Um, our client size, so we would never really take any clients bigger than have the so I have bigger uh, employees or larger number than 2,000 employees. Um, we work solely with our clients, so we work on a partnership basis. Um, we handhold our clients through the whole onboarding and implementation, whether it be for the first time that they're outsourcing or their switching provider. Next slide, please. We are fully compliant, so you can see we have both ISO accreditations. We are also a BACS approved bureau and have been for more than 20 years. Um, so this means that we can also make the payments for salaries in PAYE from your bank account without having the access. Um, we work solely through a secure GDPR portal, um, so everything would be uploaded through that just to make the whole process more streamlined for you. Um, both from a client and an employee perspective, all pay documents are submitted that way. Um, we have a full disaster recovery plan, we've, which we've actually been exercising. Um, so our payroll partner packages for any new PAYE schemes that are setting up, um, we can support from setting up the PAYE um, through to setting up the pension scheme. Our payroll flex is um, all of our clients who need the fully managed payroll and also would look for us to do the ongoing administration and assessment of their payroll of their pension. Sorry. And then the payroll core is just for us to support with payroll. Um, for members um, on the call today, we do offer a discount in our fees. Um, obviously, this will depend on the service that you're looking for as to the, the type of or the amount that you would be paying anyway. Next slide, please. 
Um, so the benefits of having a payroll partner. So uh, to begin with, when this presentation started with myself, you might not actually be thinking um, of outsourcing or switching your provider. But the questions to ask yourself would be, as it stands at the moment with your payroll process, does everyone get paid on time and accurately? Do your reports or do our reports give us all of the information they need for the whole business? And what is the process for our pension administration? Is your process the most streamlined way in which it could be? Are you having issues? Are you having errors regularly? Is it taking up too much time um, in-house? So those are the types of questions to um, ask yourself because the benefits of having a payroll, part, a payroll partner mean that you do get a single point of contact, especially with ourselves or an account manager uh, responsible for the team processing. Um, you get a friendly and knowledgeable team members. There's a tailored approach. Um, it's cost effective. Um, it's transparent, accurate and compliant. Um, and we are completely experienced. So we do take the time in training um, our team monthly um, to make sure that everybody's kept up to speed with any updates within the industry. Next slide. OK, and lastly, just the setup process. I wanted to give you a bit of background as to what that looks like. So you would get a consultation per, uh, period with ourselves where we would um, sit down and understand a little bit more about what it is that you're looking for. Um, we'll get an agreement in principle. Um, so we'll sign the SLA. Um, Anti-money laundering would be completed. You'd then go through implementation where we would set up your payroll and pension scheme with ourselves and get everything aligned. And then month one would start. So the actual payroll process is uh, the submission is uploaded through the portal. You get a 48 hour turnaround of us to run your payroll and upload the reports. We'd then get uh, the BACS approval and then the RTI to HMRC. Pay docs would be uploaded and the salaries would go into the account. Um, and all pay docs for the employees would be uploaded 24 hours before pay date. Um, and I think that's it. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm now going to move on to Amy Deacon from Western Union Business Solutions. Thanks, Charlotte. Hi, I'm Amy from Western Union Business Solutions. And for nearly 170 years, Western Union has been moving money across borders for families, businesses and communities. So a lot of you are probably importing or exporting and want to convert one currency into another. That's what we're here to do. So with our decades worth of insights and world class network with a currency portfolio that is literally second to none, we empower businesses to make decisions in an evolving environment. Next slide, please. So don't worry, I'm not going over all these numbers. There's a lot of things going on, on on this page, but the bottom line is our skilled financial specialists provide market insights and risk management solutions for your business bespoke to you that help protect your profits. We've got a strong history of innovation and a commitment to compliance, which means we focus on international payments so you can focus on what you do best and expand globally. So we process millions of payments every day with business customers in a range of sectors doing incoming and outgoing going payments, as well as mass payments for overseas payroll and payments in single or multiple currencies. Next slide, please. please. <clears throat> So just a quick overview on the kind of things that can affect currency exchange rates. The most prevalent one at the moment being the pandemic, but other things can come into play. So um, if we use an example of um, a politician sending an offensive tweet, that can affect uh, impact. That can impact on exchange rates. And we monitor these kind of data so that you don't have to. Next slide, please. Don't worry, again, I'm not going over everything on here. It's just to highlight the, the vast array of things that are going on in the marketplace that can affect exchange rates. So from GDP releases to central bank rate decisions. And we provide this kind of content to our clients um, on a monthly basis um, with our team of strategists whose whole role is to look at the market and provide this knowledge to our clients. Next page, please. Um, uncertainty is bad news in business, but especially when it comes to foreign exchange um, transactions. So negotiated prices and calculated profits can be significantly impacted if exchange rates suddenly move adversely on the day of payment. So one of the best ways businesses can protect their bottom lines is to have a hedging strategy, which I'll, I'll touch on in a second. But on this graph, you can see the kind of swings that have been happening over the past year between sterling and dollar. So back in February 2020, we actually hit a 35 year low of $1.14 to the pound, whereas now we're trading about 24% higher. So without a, a strategy,
Again, these are the kind of insights we share. So this is a forecasting tool that we regularly release each month. Um, so you can see the high best case scenario and the low best the worst case scenario and the, the mid range scenario. Again, this is dollar sterling. Um, and again, if you don't have a plan in place on how to mitigate against the swings that could happen, um, you're going to have to absorb those costs or, or yeah, make a loss or pass it on to your customers. So our risk management specialists work with you to find the right combination of products to help protect against your bottom line in case the rates do go against you. Next slide, please. And a lot of time can be spent if you're chasing exchange rates and going between different providers. And, and we all know that time costs money. So each member of our team goes through an extensive qualification program to ha help make sure you're getting the best bespoke support for you and your business. Um, and by having a hedging strategy, you don't have to react to the market. You're in better control. So even when the rates do go against you, you're locked in a rate with us so that you don't have to then um, absorb those costs. Next slide, please. Just so you know, I need a plan minute left. No problem. Um, so these are the key things that we do. We identify your exposure, we develop a strategy, and then we execute it with you. Next slide, please. A very quick case study. Um, one of our clients had a 20% um, rate adversely affect him. Um, we stepped in, put in a strategy in place, saved him around 15% of his time per week, and also stabilised his rates. Next slide, please. And these are the kind of insights we can provide. So everything from, you know, the disruption with the supply chain in China to monthly currency outlooks, all of these links I can share with you guys post events or if you come to the table and have a chat. Uh, and next slide, please. And there's lots I can talk about. Mindful, we've only got five minutes. So come and see me on the table. We can talk about um, exchange rates, currencies, um, multiple currencies and holding balances. That's Amy Deakin from Western Union Business Solutions. That was brilliantly timed, Amy. Thank you very much. Um, you did drop out slightly on one of the slides, so if anyone wants a recap of that, uh, just visit the Western Union table. Um, and we're now going to move on um, to our last presentation for this session uh, with Bill Hammett from M Bill, you're muted. Sorry. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And uh, no pressure on the five minute time limit, me between uh, you all and a coffee break. So I will try and whistle through this. Um, so thanks to everyone in the Conference UK team for setting up this event. It's a first for us at MPA and a first of many as we uh, as we build our support for Conference UK and, and all the Conference UK members. Um, I'm going to give a very brief introduction, very high level introduction to MPA in the next five minutes. Um, and also aim to provide a bit of a talking point to take us into the networking session. So to introduce MPA, I'd like to start by sharing our purpose. Um, so, yeah, we exist to release, accelerate and sustain world leading innovation uh, delivered by forward thinking UK businesses. And um, for so many leaders and business owners right now, the challenges of of running a company have taken priority over, over building a company. Uh, and since 2007, we've worked with thousands of UK companies across engineering, manufacturing, IT, the construction sector, right across the innovation spectrum to help release, accelerate, and sustain world leading innovation. So what do we do? We, we effectively, we free up the capacity to develop and execute our ideas, um, taking care of accounts, tax issues, uh, funding, exits, pay, blah, et cetera, et cetera, at HMRC. You know, these are the admin burdens on um, a lot of businesses. And in short, we reduce drag. We reduce the friction in, in running a business on a day-to-day -day basis. Next slide, please, Charlotte. Um, thank you. Um, so like many of the clients we serve, we are different uh, and we think differently. Um, we're specific about the space we operate in and also uh, the value we create. Um, if you look on the left, um, R&D tax specialists work with innovative, innovative businesses too, um, but are focused on a, on a very single benefit. Um, accountancy firms uh, obviously differ in their approach uh, and, and scale, um, uh, have a range of services, but a broad cross-section of, uh, of sectors that they're, they're responsible for. And banks increasingly are moving towards services which support innovative businesses and startups 
good example of that, um, Barclays Eagle Labs, which I'm sure you're all aware of. So MP MPA occupies this space at the top right here, um, professional services for innovative businesses. Um, so we've been serving SMEs from startup to exit for a good number of years, for over 14 years. Um, companies involved in new processes, improved practices, concepts, prototypes, and, and product launches. Next slide, please, Charlotte. Thank you. Um, so our business is underpinned by the four core elements that are actually locked up in our logo there, um, which I've explained it out here for you. Um, that is knowledge, network, heritage, um, and services. Our knowledge is grounded in a, in a large, permanent in-house team with experts in our business from engineering, manufacturing, IT, robotics, biotech. I could, I could list them for ages here. Um, I'll, I'll spare you now. Um, our network of partners is extensive, and, and we often connect our own clients with each other where their projects or their objectives um, overlap and align. And that built, network has been built up over the last 14 years or so across thousands of clients. And we deliver our range of services in line with our core values of client first, excellence in execution, and of course, innovation. Final slide, please, Charlotte, we got there. I think I've got 30 seconds or so. So at the start of this presentation, I mentioned a talking point for the networking session later. So near the start of the coronavirus pandemic, the World Economic Forum announced its campaign for the Great Reset. This was a challenge to all business leaders to, to, to reimagine how we operate uh, as business leaders and move towards a more sustainable and fairer world, essentially to build back better. It wasn't Boris that coined that phrase first. So I'd love to hear what you're doing in your business to build back better. What are the challenges? Are the conditions right at the moment? Is the future clear? Um, or are such notions of a great reset just too distant a vision right now? So I look forward to seeing you in the network session to discuss. ...of increasing um, PR and marketing activity um, in, within the concerts industry. Next slide, please. So I'll be talking about um, what additional PR and marketing can do. We'll talk about social media, the importance of integrated communications, the importance of evaluation, I'll tell you a little bit about RPR and marketing, and then the importance of reputation. Um, go to the next slide, please. Um, I always like to start off my uh, presentations with this quote from um, Bill Gates. Um, a lot of people have got this image of PR um, as something fluffy, um, a bit absolutely fabulous, um, and just a little bit of puff, a little bit of fun. Um, but Bill Gates recognized that there are real business benefits to be had. Um, and you can see from this quote how important um, he sees that within the whole marketing mix. Next slide, please, Charlotte. Um, so what can PR and marketing do for your business? Well, it's largely about um, supporting your sales, about creating an environment and nurturing an environment within which your uh, sales teams can go out um, and uh, make contact and build relationships. It also does, of course, um, help with um, inquiries as well, increasing awareness um, through um, specialist media outlets, um, through social media, um, and it's a way to, to reach um, those people that, um, frankly, there are very, very few ways to reach them at the moment because of the restrictions um, due to lockdown. It's very, very important that all of your PR is integrated within your marketing and that that is with, integrated within your um, corporate and business objectives. Uh, next slide, please. Um, social media is playing an increasingly important part in this, um, and that is especially important to reach younger engineers, and the approach we take is to um, try to influence, not just at the um, top level, but also to influence those um, people that are on the shop floor that are experiencing problems um, that your, some of your companies might have the solutions for. Um, next slide, please. And I mentioned the importance of the, uh, being integrated. Well, the idea is, is that you use the work that you're doing, you translate it into PR and it boosts your profile with customers, with funders and staff. But most of our work is about um, business development, it's about reaching customers, both potential and existing. Uh, next slide, please. And the idea is, is that you reach them with a magazine article, 
um, one, on the Monday. Then on the Tuesday, they see you on social media. They see an ad on the Wednesday. On the Thursday, receive your newsletter. And there's no conversations at trade shows at the moment. So on the Friday, they uh, phone you to place the order. That's a very, very truncated way to do it. And if it was that simple, um, I would be a millionaire. Um, but it's not, and these things do take time. Next slide, please. It's really, really important um, that things are measured. Um, so we set our objectives at the start, um, and that might be in terms of increasing awareness or reaching out to people or indeed generating leads. Um, and we have got a service. Most of the work we do is in um, uh, PR and marketing is longer with, um, but this is, um, we've also got a lead generation service, which we've just developed over the last six months, which is helping our clients pivot into new industries. Next slide, please. And you measure success, success by setting the objectives. Um, and I said before, ensuring all those objectives are aligned with where the business is going. And we establish a, a baseline to see just, just how effective we're being. Uh, next slide, please. So a quick bit about our PR and marketing. We're a specialist PR and marketing agency. Um, we don't do any other form of PR and marketing. It's only um, advanced engineering, uh, composites, scientific. Um, and we are an award-winning team. Uh, we've award, won PR awards. Um, next slide, please. But we're also... And well, we've helped out with that with this particular client too. We helped to win a Queen's Award. Next slide, please. And these are a few examples of what um, our clients think. So we've got good media contacts, and we translate complex technical issues into easy uh, and uh, digestible stories. Next slide, please. And the important thing about the next quote is, is that 60% of the requests were coming from new sources, and that Peter attributes that directly to the work we did. Next slide, please. We also have worked directly with these guys, so we secured approvals through the OEMs. We've got very, very good uh, uh, networks into the OEMs. Next slide, please. And we've also got very, very good uh, relationships with the media, and they know that we provide them with quality content. Next slide, please. The Arrow team, that's the, the full range of us. Um, on the next slide, please. And that is Arrow PR and Marketing, and that's the benefit of increased new PR marketing activity. And I'm happy to talk about it further um, in the breakout room after this. Thank you, Billy. Um, we are due to move on now to Hannah Robertson from Hannah Tech, but I believe she's having connection issues. Um, a couple of seconds to see if that can be rectified. Um, I'm not going to try and do a presentation, but we will run through her slides if she's not able to get connected, and then hopefully she can speak to you on her table. Um, Okay, Claire, if we could just start going through those slides um, yeah. and I can try and give a brief overview of uh, Hannah Tech. So um, what Hannah and her team are um, very good at is bringing companies into a more digital age. Um, so what they try and do is um encourage the use of different of new technologies new systems to improve productivity um to make things much easier for businesses so if you want to go through to the next slide uh, hannah if you do come on at any point please come and save me so i don't say anything i shouldn't um so i from what hannah's said to me when uh we set up Hannah Tech as a business support network partner. Hannah has worked in the manufacturing industry um, quite some time and identified through the businesses she worked with that um, the traditional factories needed to move towards being factories of the future and encouraged them to implement new systems and technologies. Uh, next slide. So what they will do is they will come into uh, the business, look at the current systems in place, and then using 
support from those businesses, looking at the budgets, looking at what they're prepared to to move forward with. Um, Hannah will then advise with her team uh, the best solutions available. Uh, next slide. Uh, so this is their team. Hannah is uh, the owner of the company and is the business transformation consultant. Shannon Bradley is the latest member of the team, I believe, um, and is I'm barely certain her role is looking after their presence on line with social media. Uh, they run their own webinars as well, which seems to be incredibly well received and I'm desperately trying to get on one. And then David Smith, who I'll be honest, I don't know what David does. Um, but David is an independent full stack web developer. Uh, so next slide. Uh, so they offer technical and consultancy services to support digital transformation. Um, and they'll make it as simple, accessible and affordable for each business that they're working with. So it's not too much of a too much of a shock to a business. Uh, next slide. This is how they do it. So they'll come in, do an initial baseline review, which um, members can receive as part of um, the benefit that Hannah Tech offers. So they'll, put, they'll then put together a plan of quick win opportunities and start working towards a roadmap for moving into uh, a more digital age. And then they'll support you working through testing, training, making those changes and uh, reviewing the systems that have been implemented. Next slide. So this is, um, you can see this in the members area if you use your logins and go on to um, Hannah Tech's page. Um, this is how they do it. I'm not going to try and read through it. Um, next slide, but I'm sure Hannah will be on her table um, and able to answer any questions um so this is how she's taken a business from using paper copies of everything to doing it more digitally to make it much friendlier um and safer next slide again taking it from a traditional way of doing things and moving it into a more digital framework solving problems having conversations and looking for new solutions um next slide and again please so as I say if Hannah is able to get onto the table um, you can speak with uh, her there and I'm sure she'll explain it a lot better than I did otherwise there's all their details um, and uh, as I say there is their page on the members area of the website um, should you need it um, to get in touch with them that way Hannah, I hope I did that some form of justice. Um, next slide. I think we're now moving on to Simon Burleson. Simon, I hope you're there because I don't think I can do another person's presentation. <laughs> yeah, um, so Simon is from Moneypenny. Cheers. Thanks, Charlotte. <laughs> so uh, who are Moneypenny? Uh, believe it or not, you've all probably spoken with Moneypenny at some point. You just won't have known it. We are the UK's leading telephone answering and live chat service provider, uh, supporting around 21,000 businesses with uh, calls and chats. Next slide, please. So as business manager, I work with businesses to not only understand the current challenges they face, but also help shape and, and drive a better customer journey each and every single time for them. So businesses will often turn to money penny if they are missing calls if they're looking at reducing costs of employing an internal receptionist or they're simply needing cover for out of hours for example and um, they may not have the right technology in place to be able to transfer a call through to the correct employee or department and um, often having to rely upon simply taking a a, a message and sending that through um, relying upon contact back next slide please 
So for our clients, we, we, we really want them to see us as their second home. We're, we're all about culture and, and values at Moneypenny, and, and we're really proud to have featured for over a decade as a as a Sunday Times top 100 company to work for um, and really employing, well, employing really great people to, to, to look after our, our, our clients. Um, it does require a, a, a lot of trust for businesses to outsource their communications, um, particularly when we're representing their their brand so it's it's imperative that that we get things right and and you are supported by the very best so we work with smes right the way up to your, your multinational firms that may actually need a fully outsourced switchboard facility but just taking a look at some of our more recognizable brands that that we work with if you've ever booked in in your car for a, a service and um, a bmw then you, you may well have spoken to us next slide please so how exactly do we answer calls for, for our clients? So we give you a dedicated receptionist on hand 24 seven to look after everything your in-house team would do and more essentially. So we can either answer all of your calls uh, or simply those uh, that you miss ensuring that no calls. It's no one's no fault, is it? Answered. Say that again, sorry. Uh, calls can be transferred through to the correct employee or department, or we can capture uh, a detailed message and send via text or email. Yeah, yeah, um, news, having a professional from mine is... Just mute. Well, yeah, that should be okay now. So. Good to go. No worries. Um, having a professional front line is, is crucial for a, a seamless caller experience. Um, obviously, given the, the current climate, it's, it's vital that, that no call goes unanswered as it could potentially be missed new reven revenue um, uh, or a missed new revenue generating inquiry for, for the business. Um, with the shift in remote working and, and working from home as well and ad adoption of new phone systems. We now actually integrate with the likes of Microsoft Teams to be able to transfer calls through wherever your staff are based. Next slide, please. So I think that the future of communications is, is also changing. I'm um, in the fast moving world of text, chats, posts and tweets consumers increasingly want to interact with businesses in the same way that they connect with family and friends using conversational technology and um, so live chat is something you've all probably used at some stage to either chase an order to make an inquiry or ask a, a simple question um, live chat is for us one of the fastest growing communication channels with businesses seeing on average a 40 percent increase in new inquiries when they do place it onto their website um, but that the interesting fact around that is that it actually doesn't detract from the number of calls or um, inquiries that you would receive on on other channels so it really is engaging with people on the website that that may not have gotten contacts um, anyway so um, exactly as we do for telephone answering, our live chat agents will be briefed on how to handle a full range of FAQs for your business with the transcripts then sent through to the correct team and department um, or viewed in, in, in real time on, on the portal. Next slide, please. Um, so if you'd like to try Moneypenny, we do offer a an extended two-week free trial of, of both of the services um, for all Composite UK members. Um, but obviously, I'd love to tell you more about us. So any questions, do pop over to the, the table or the networking after. Thank you, Simon. Uh, so we're going to move on now to Mark Ashmore from Works Group. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Ashmore, and I'm the director of WorkScreen. Um, our product is basically designed for employers who have employees who work in noise. And our mission is to improve access to workplace hearing health surveillance. Noise-induced hearing loss is the single biggest contributory factor to hearing loss after aging, and it's usually preventable. Um, in fact, I used to own an independent hearing aid practice, and I've seen firsthand how miserable hearing loss can be. Um, on top of that, there is now an increasing body of evidence suggesting untreated hearing loss um, hastens early onset dementia. So helping people to conserve their hearing is the right thing to do. Slide two, please. Uh, in addition to being the right thing to do, it's also the law. Um, the Control of Noise at Work Act 2005 obligates employers who have employees working in noise to take a, a series of steps to, to protect their workers' hearing. 
and hearing health surveillance or hearing screening as it's commonly known is very much a part of that process. Um, the HSE regulations and guidelines set out the applicable standards that govern the supply of a service like this. Let's have a look at the options that are available. Uh, next slide, please. Traditionally, a hearing aid, sorry, traditionally, a trained operator with a calibrated bit of kit known as an audiometer needs to be face to face with the person being tested. The trained operator, the audiometrist or the audiologist conducts the test and interprets the results using an audiometer, the calibrated bit of kit. Um, as you can see on the slide, this can be done on site. It can be done in a mobile clinic or sometimes it can be, it can be done off site. But the fact is the face to face nature of that transaction means that logistically it's not particularly efficient and getting everybody available on the same day is often a problem. Costs can be prohibitive and also the, the mass downtime on that day can also be an issue for employers. So WorkScreen has developed a self-administered, automatic, software-driven hearing test that eliminates the need for a face-to-face -face process. It's effectively a 24-7 testing system available to use whenever required and, in, and therefore lifts a significant barrier in terms of providing hearing testing. Uh, slide four, please. So what is the system? Put simply, it's a tablet and headphone which has been calibrated to the required British standards and when connected to a URL is capable of delivering a hearing test that meets both the British standards in terms of being a class four audiometer and HSE guidelines in terms of the outputs that it um, makes, the way that it classifies the person's hearing and the, the information that it gives. It's entirely intuitive. It takes about 20 minutes per person and it will output the results of the test immediately on the screen and by email. Obviously, all of the, the, the information is held in the database for the employer's later use and we provide a report to the employer in line with the guidelines. Uh, slide five, please. Um, yes, UK member benefits. So I'm not going to go through all of those. That would be boring. I'm just going to point out that um, we do have the test available in Romanian and Polish. That's been quite popular. Um, and of course, I'd be happy to talk about any of this with anybody who's interested after this event. Um, slide six, please. So thank you very much for listening. Um, I'll be delighted to talk, to answer any questions in the chat room when the, after this presentation or you could email me at info at workscreenuk.co.uk. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we're now going to move on to Chris Dayas from... Thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, I'm going to give you a quick introduction of what Briar uh, do with Composite UK. Uh, next slide, please. So what we actually do, um, if you can keep clicking for me, um, we are, we're a full technical consultancy service and we can offer help with climate change agreements, energy surveys, mechanical and electrical design, um, condition surveys, EPCs and decks, energy and water procurement, uh, TM44s, more commonly known as air conditioning certificates, BMS um, and training, energy training. Next slide, please. More importantly, what can we do for you? Uh, well, four years ago, we signed an agreement with Composite UK to apply um, for discounted climate change levy for clients um, in the composite industry. Depending on your energy spend, we can apply for a reduction in your CCL on both electricity and gas. So CCL accounts for about 6% of your uh, total energy bill. Uh, we can reclaim the CCL for up to four years. Uh, and we work at risk, so we for things like uh, TCR, which is the transmission charge review, um, and the row fit, the uh, renewable obligation and the feed-in tariff payments are also going up. So now's the time to sort of start looking at this. Next slide, please. Some of the sectors we work with, um, motorsport, uh, particularly F1, we do a lot with them. 
Uh, we work uh, with a lot of aerospace companies, that's um, both tier one actually and, and OEMs. Um, automotive industry, uh, a lot of composites now being used in automotive and in the power yacht sector as well. So some of the big expensive power yachts are, are switching over to sort of uh, carbon fiber. So a lot of usage there. That's not an exhaustive list of what we do. We work with um, a lot of companies. Um, and one to note would be uh, Sigmatex. Um, we're one of the um, trial companies we, we did this with back in 2017. So you're probably aware of Sigmatex that produced the uh, mat. Next slide, please. So successes so far since 2017, we've recovered in excess of three million pounds in climate change levy for Composite UK members. Um, and future savings going up to 2023 is another one million pounds sort of forecast as well. Uh, next slide, please. So if you've got any interest, um, you know, you can give me a shout or come and visit me at the table and, uh, and I can give you some more information. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you, Chris. And uh, last presentation for this session is Barry Quinn from Penin. Thanks, Charlotte. Uh, morning, everyone. Good to be here. My first uh, Composites UK event. Um, who are Peninsula? Um, essentially, we've been around since 1983, providing support in HR and health and safety to mostly small businesses, SMEs, but also some corporate organizations as well. But the SMEs is the, is the main bread and butter of what we do. Next slide, please. Just a little bit of background information. We've been around since 1983, um, and you can see we're given in excess of about a million pieces of employment law advice each year. Company's still growing, um, and obviously legislation changes quicker than it ever has done now, so we're having to try and stay ahead of the curve to make sure that our clients can get on with running the business the way that they want to without getting caught out by red tape. Next slide, please. Um, originally, we were founded in Manchester in 1983. Over the last six or seven years, we've also set up operations over in Australia, New Zealand, and in Canada most recently. Next slide, please. Um, just to summarise what we do, health and safety, uh, assistance and support for, for business owners to make sure that they're getting that right, um, probably more so now than, than ever with uh, all of the, the pandemic situation, what that's done for health and safety, employment law, day-to-day -day HR issues, and generally the well-being of your, of your employees and your workforce as well. So next slide, please. Selection of some of the, the larger organizations that we work with, as I said, they're in the minority. We tend to do the SME market is our, our bread and butter, but there's just some names that you might recognize in there. Next slide, please. Um, we offer a fully outsourced HR health and safety support, so from critiquing your existing contracts of employment, um, right the way through to create an updated suite of HR documents, staff handbooks, policies, procedures, etc. Next slide, please. Um, the, the advisory team, so all of our clients get access to unlimited 24-7 HR health and safety advice. On the HR advice line, everyone on there is a minimum CIPD level 7 qualified because the majority of those clients um, have got our optional tribunal insurance. So the insurance that we give is insured should they go to an employment tribunal. Uh, hopefully they don't because that's the object is to keep you away from those situations. Um, but the team are there to, to, to understand what you want the outcome to be and handhold you through that process. Next slide please so as i said we can create your bespoke documentation your staff handbooks your logos etc uh, documentation whether that be uh, contracts whether it be self-employed subcontractor agreements the whole range of, of documents that you need for your business next slide please uh, next slide please as well if you haven't gone through the, the 24 hour advice uh, next slide please Okay, so what we do, we put together all your documentation onto an online portal, which you'll have access to. Next slide, please. We'll create your documentation, you've got access to those. Next slide, please. Also, any cases of advice where you've called us, you've got full access to that, so you can see the history of any cases where you've been taking advice about a particular employee. I'm sure we've all had one over the years that's been a bit of a, a, bit of a problem, but in general, most people are absolutely brilliant, but you get the odd one that causes an issue. You've got a full track of all the advice you've been taking from us. Next slide, please. And what we do now is producing apps for our clients to have access to as well, so you've got access to all that um, advice and documentation on the move as well in your pocket. Next slide, please. 
So if you did get into employment tribunal uh, situation, litigation, then the insurance, if you've got that in place with us, covers not just the legal representation, but awards and settlements as well. Next slide, please. We offer CIPD accredited e-learning for, for your staff and senior people within the organization as well as part of the service. Next slide, please. We also offer an employee wellbeing scheme for staff if they're having trouble with mental health issues and confidential support and counseling. Next slide, please. So health and safety, I'm just going to skip through fairly fairly quickly. If you've got any specific queries on this, come and see me at the table. I'll, I'll talk it through. But at the moment, um, health and safety is right up there in terms of priorities, making sure um, that you've got everything in place from health and safety policies to COVID-19 risk assessment policies, training for your staff to make sure they're competent. Next slide, please. And we've also developed apps to give you access to all of that. You can see I've highlighted the COVID-19 policy risk assessments and responsibilities planner. Next slide, please. And our bright safe system will allow you to, to keep all that in one place as well. Reference and document libraries. Next slide, please. Okay, so just in summary, it's commercially focused HR and health and safety support to allow you to get on with running the business. Peace of mind is a small monthly fee that covers everything. You don't pay for any extras. Um, but um, if anyone's got any current issues and need advice on, come and see me at the table. Happy to give a bit of complimentary advice to members today. No problem. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you, Barry. Um, Hannah, if your connection is strong enough, um, and you do want to run things through in case I missed anything, um, I probably did. Um, please feel free to, to come on now. Otherwise, um, that's it for the presentations. Um, all of the speakers will go through um, to their tables. And then, um, as I say, um, if you've got any any questions for any of our speakers, please visit their tables and the Composites UK team will be on the Composites UK table. Um, where if you've got any questions for us, um, just pop over there. Thank you.